This is Armageddon News. In this broadcast, we'll discuss the second coming of Jesus Christ, which occurs at the same time as a magnetic polar flip and catastrophic global earthquake. Good day. Not many people know what the Bible states about the second coming of Jesus Christ, and therefore, they are in danger of being deceived. This broadcast will provide you with the knowledge you need, so as not to be fooled by false Christs and false prophets. On the day which Jesus returns, there will be a polar reversal. Isaiah 24:20 says, The earth will crack and shatter and split open. The earth itself will stagger like a drunk, sway like a hut in a storm. The world is weighed down by its sins. It will collapse and never rise again. Revelation 6:12 says, There was a violent earthquake, and the sun became black like coarse black cloth, and the moon turned completely red like blood. The stars fell down to the earth, like unripe figs falling from the tree, when a strong wind shakes it. The sky disappeared like a scroll, being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. The polar flip will make the stars race across the sky, and the vacuum created from the reeling of the earth will pull the atmosphere along the ground, trying to catch up, creating what is known as a roll cloud, which will pull with it the dust and ash created from the global earthquake. Psalm 97.5 says, the mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. The global earthquake will be so bad that every hill and mountain will crumble. Revelation 16:20 says, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Revelation 6:15 says, the kings of the earth, the princes, the commanding officers, the rich, the strong, and every slave and free person hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. They told the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. And who is able to stand? The global earthquake will seem unending, and no one will be able to stand, on that day, as the sky vanishes under a roll cloud and the stars fall from heaven. The buildings in every city in the world will collapse into utter destruction, killing millions. Isaiah 30:25 calls it, the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Revelation 16:21 says, hailstones, weighing about a hundred pounds each, fell from the sky on people. After the volcanic ash and dust from the global earthquake has been kicked up into the sky, it will combine with a supercooled atmosphere from the vacuum created by the Earth's reeling. This will result in hailstones, which weigh about 100 pounds each. Matthew 24 30. Then, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the peoples of earth will weep, as they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. The great trumpet will sound, and he will send out his angels to the four corners of the earth, and they will gather his chosen people from one end of the world to the other. Revelation 1-7 says, Look, he is coming, on the clouds. Everyone will see him, including those who pierced him. All peoples on earth will mourn over him. The Bible says everyone on earth, will see him. Because at that time, the earth will be reeling, from the polar reversal, allowing every place on earth to see the coming of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4-16 says, There will be the shout of command the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then we, who are living, at that time, will be gathered up along with them, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. This is what is known as the rapture. It will occur when the global earthquake begins and the Christians will be saved from this terrible wrath of God, poured out upon mankind. All those believers, who have turned to Christ, during the tribulation and are still alive, will be gathered together, with the resurrected Christians, and will be collected by God's angels, from the four corners of the earth, 
and brought together to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Corinthians 15:51 says, that when the resurrection happens, Jesus will transform his people, mortals into immortals. And God's army of angels will gather his Christians, bringing them to Jerusalem, where they will appear from heaven with the Lord, to defend Israel. Revelation 19:11 says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Zechariah 14:4 says, He will take his stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the mountain will split in half, forming a wide valley that runs from east to west. From here, Jesus will go out to wage war, against the Antichrist and his army, and the many Arab nations, coming against Jerusalem and Israel. Joel 3:16 The Lord roars from Mount Zion. His voice thunders from Jerusalem. Earth and sky tremble. But he will defend his people. Revelation 19:14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Joel 2:4. They look like horses. They run like war horses. As they leap on the tops of the mountains, they rattle like chariots. They crackle like dry grass on fire. They are lined up like a great army, ready for battle. As they approach, everyone is terrified. Every face turns pale. They attack like warriors. They climb the walls like soldiers. They all keep marching straight ahead and do not change direction or get in each other's way. They swarm through defenses, and nothing can stop them. They rush against the city. They run over the walls. They climb up the houses and go in through the windows like thieves. The earth shakes as they advance. The sky trembles. The sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord thunders commands to his army. The troops that obey him are many and mighty. How terrible is the day of the Lord! Who will survive it? Revelation 19:19. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to fight against the one who was riding the horse and against his army. The beast was taken prisoner, together with the false prophet who had performed miracles in his presence. It was by those miracles that he had deceived those who had the mark of the beast, and those who had worshipped the image of the beast. The beast and the false prophet were both thrown alive into the lake of fire, that burns with sulfur. This burning place, is likely the valley which Jesus creates by splitting the Mount of Olives and into it, will be thrown the Antichrist and his false prophet, who deceived many by his satanic miracles, such as calling fire down from heaven, in the sight of people. It will be by these miracles, which people will be deceived into taking the mark of the Antichrist, on their forehead or right hand, and worshipping the Antichrist and his image. Jesus will go out to wage war, against the Arab armies, gathering against Jerusalem and Israel. It will be in the Valley of Medigo, where this much-published Battle of Armageddon, will take place between Jesus Christ and the ten Arab kings and their armies, which they have assembled together, and are advancing toward Israel to destroy the last remnant of the Jewish people. Revelation 19.12, describes Jesus saying, His eyes were like a flame of fire. Revelation 19.15 says, Out of his mouth came the sharp sword, with which he will defeat the nations. He will rule over them with a rod of iron. The sword from his mouth will utterly destroy these Arab armies by a burning fire. Ezekiel 39.6 says, I will start a fire in the land of Magog and along all the sea coasts where people live undisturbed, and everyone will know that I am the Lord. I will make sure that my people Israel know my holy name, and I will not let my name be disgraced any more. Then the nations will know, that I, the Lord, am a holy God, of Israel. Revelation 20, 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key of the abyss, and a heavy chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient servant, that is, the devil, or Satan, and chained him up for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the abyss, locked it, and sealed it, so that he could not deceive the nations any more, until the thousand years were over. After that he must be set loose for a little while. Matthew 25 31 says, When the Son of Man comes as King, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his royal throne, 
and the people of all the nations will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the righteous people at his right, and the others at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come, you that are blessed by my father. Come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, When Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you in our homes, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison, and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this, for one of the least important, of these followers, of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Away from me, you that are under God's curse. Away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry but you would not feed me, thirsty but you would not give me a drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me in your homes. Naked but you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. Then they will answer him, When Lord, did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and we would not help you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refuse to help me. These, then, will be sent off to eternal punishment, but the righteous will go to eternal life. As you can see from these sayings of Jesus, those non-Christian people left alive will be judged by Jesus by whether or not they helped the Christians, in the hour of their great distress. The poor, the needy, the sick, and those Christians being persecuted and imprisoned, by the nations, because of their belief in Jesus. Those who take care of the Christians will be welcomed into Jesus Christ's kingdom, but those who refuse to help them, or take care of them, will be cast in the lake of fire. Along with those who took the Middle East King's Mark of the Beast, and worshipped him and his image. And how terrible this judgment will be. For Revelation 14:11 says, If you worship the beast and the idol, and accept the mark of its name, you will be tortured day and night. The smoke from your torture will go up forever and ever, and you will never be able to rest. Now you have been told exactly how the second coming of Jesus Christ will occur. So let no one fool you, into believing that Christ, or the Messiah, has come even though they perform signs and wonders. For Jesus said, many will be led astray, by the satanic miracles of the Antichrist and false prophet, who will make their appearance in Jerusalem. Jesus said in Mark 13 6, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 2 Thessalonians 2 3 says, Do not let anyone deceive you in any way. For the day will not come, until the final rebellion takes place, and the wicked one appears, who is destined to hell. He will oppose every so-called god or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple and claim to be God. Those in Jerusalem the Middle East and the world will be deceived by this man, who will sit in God's temple in Jerusalem and claim to be God. And the false prophet, whom biblical scholars believe will impersonate Jesus Christ himself, will try and deceive all by his satanic miracles, telling the world that the Bible is a lie, and all must submit to Islam, and the Mahdi. And there will be a great apostasy, and many who thought they were Christians, will believe this false prophet. So let no one deceive you claiming to be Christ or God. For Jesus will only return, on the day the earth's poles reverse, and a global earthquake reels the